So I'm a particle physicist, and what we particle physicists like to do is we like to take things apart and find their smallest constituents. So we like to go to the smallest uh, matter and pull it apart until we can find, we can find no, nothing that's indivisible anymore. So everybody knows about atoms, and atoms are made of nuclei and electrons, and those nuclei in turn are made of, of neutrons, and, or neutrons and protons, and those up in turn are made up of quarks. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to study the quarks and see what they're made of, and also try and see if there are other particles that uh, mediate the forces between the quarks. Most famously, the scientists, particle physicists, including teams that, that people at Cornell, myself included, are on, have discovered is the Higgs boson. So to give you a sense of scale, an atom is about one ten billionth of a meter in size. Uh, neutrons and protons are about one in uh, one quintillionth of a, of a meter in size. And quarks, what we're looking at right now, are a billion billionth of a meter in size. So in order to set a scale for that, what I like to do is I like to think of, instead of going from one meter down to the size of a quark, I like to go from a that one meter upwards in the same amount. So as if I was examining at the same different scale. And in order to do that, you go from one meter to about 172 light years, so about the, the size of a globular cluster. So that's, that's what gives you a feeling for the immense size, how close we are looking at the very smallest scales. So what kind of instrument do we use to do this kind of science? Well, we use particle colliders. In particular, the, CERN, the Cornell scientists work at the CERN Large Hadron Collider, which is shown here in this image. It's located outside of Geneva, Switzerland. And to give you a sense of scale, right here is a picture of the Geneva airport with two daily flights to, uh, to Washington and to Newark. The collider itself is 17 kilometers long, and it's shown here. It straddles the French-Swiss countryside, which you can see in the dotted line in this image. Um, the lab itself is located on the side, and also it, is, it straddles the French-Swiss countryside, so I can have lunch in France and walk over to Switzerland to do some science. There are two main experiments at the Large Hadron Collider. What we do there is we collide beams of protons, um, counter-rotating beams of protons at two locations, at the ATLAS detector and the CMS detector. The CMS detector is the one that Cornell is participating in, and a bunch of us work there and have been working there in the French countryside for uh, doing a really great science. So what does this detector actually look like? Well, here's a cartoon, and the way to think about this, this cartoon here is at the very center of the detector is where the protons are made to collide. So those Proton beams, this is a, our detector is like a camera. And it's in some ways very similar to the camera in our cell phones, and in other ways it's very different. Rather than being able to take a couple of pictures a second, this camera takes pictures in three dimensions and can take 40 million of them in a second. And so it's an immensely powerful camera. It's the size of a six-story building, and it weighs as much as more than 3747. So it's a gigantic device. Here's some pictures of the device itself. Uh, the horizontal uh, tube you see there is where the protons come in. This is it during its construction where it was gently lowered into a cave about 100 meters in, uh, below the French countryside. And in parts, the detector can be strangely beautiful. So this is the, looking at the very innermost part where the beams are made to collide. During the construction, there was a lot of concerns that we would destroy the universe in our, uh, in our, with our scientific experiments. So we put together this CMS abort switch to try and say that if we ever were about on the verge of destroying the universe, we would crash, we would turn this off and prevent that from happening, just letting off a bunch of steam. So what's shown right here is an image, a cartoon of what a, such a collision might actually look like. So what you're looking at is the innermost center of the detector, and soon you'll see two yellow dots coming in and representing the two counter-rotating beams, and they collide. And this is one, uh, one of the pictures, what it looks like, a three-dimensional view of all the different particles coming out of the collision and where we can extract what happened when those two protons um, hit each other. So one of the problems with our cameras is that uh, we can take a lot of pictures, but we can't afford to store them. Just like in Google Storage, maybe Google Photos, maybe you can only store so many pictures. Um, we also have to, we can only save about, of, of the 40 million pictures that we take, we can only save about 10,000. So we have to uh, decide very quickly based with some special calculations whether a picture is worth saving or not. So in this particular image, you're seeing a, a specialized computer built at Cornell that allows you to suck in the immense amount of data that the LHC generates and do some very quick calculations to decide whether the data is to be kept or to be rejected. The um, analog of how much data this device can absorb is it can absorb the equivalent of about 35 4 gigabyte of uh, 4K movies per second. So it's an immense amount of throughput, and it's a very specialized and very cool technology that we're using to do the science that we do. As a result of all this is our standard model, the standard model of particle physics. And what you're seeing here are the quarks and leptons and the force carriers and the Higgs boson that make up all the, mo the material that we know about in the universe around us. So we have a very complete picture. We know almost everything about the material that makes up this table, this chair, this room that I'm sitting in. 
Um, and what you're seeing right here is an image of the data that we collected where we finalized the, the picture we did that made the discovery of the Higgs boson. So what's shown in blue is the data coming in from all the other physics that we knew about. And then in red, what's starting to peak out in this image is the discovery of the Higgs boson. So this is data collected over a period of a couple of years and culminating in um, 2012 in the discovery of the Higgs boson and that raging peak that's, that's appearing there in the plot there. So that was a very exciting time for us in the LHC when we made that discovery. Since then, we have continued to, uh, to with our understanding of the, the world around us and of, of all the particles, but we're by no means done. Cosmology tells us that the universe around us is actually made up of about 73% dark energy and about 23% dark matter. And that the stuff that I was just describing, the thing that's all around us, the energy of it, is really only about 5% of the matter content of the universe. So we know almost everything about almost nothing. So that's what the goal is of particle physics in the future, is to try to learn more about the rest of the, the energy content of the universe. And we're really excited about it.